The Boston Celtics probably have the most complete starting five in basketball. Drew Holiday, Derek White, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, and Kristaps Porzingis is about as good as it gets in terms of talent, fit, and versatility. And a league best 46-12 record backs that up. But for all the versatility this lineup gives you, the Celtics have somewhat remained stuck in their ways, being overly reliant on the three-point shot and failing to adjust when their plan A fails. They are attempting the second fewest field goals in the paint this season, while jacking up the most three-point attempts in the NBA. Only the Celtics, Warriors, and Mavericks make more than 15 threes a game. And it's a good thing the Celtics do, because they hold just an 8-6 record when they make fewer than 15. With losses to the Clippers, Nuggets, Wolves, Bucks, Magic, and Pacers, suggesting the good teams know what it takes to beat Boston. In contrast, the Celtics are an incredible 38-6 when they knock down their usual amount of three-point shots. That's a pretty striking correlation, and it tracks to their success in previous years. This is a team that relies heavily on the three-pointer. This has been their downfall in the past, as all it takes is a four-game cold spell to be eliminated from the playoffs. And while it's hard to argue with their current success, the variance that comes with three-point shooting could lead to another collapse this season. That is, unless something has finally clicked. In their 117-99 beatdown of the Philadelphia 76ers, the Celtics attempted a season-low 22 three-pointers and instead pummeled the Sixers in the paint. And sure, this feels like an obvious game plan considering Joel Embiid wasn't available to anchor Philly's defense, but it has provided a blueprint for how the Celtics could make themselves unbeatable in the playoffs. All of that three-point shooting is good and great, but Boston only reaches their full potential if that floor spacing is being used appropriately. I mean, just look at the spacing on this opening possession. Not many teams have the ability to truly go 5 out. A quick screen gets Tatum on a smaller Tyrese Maxey, and well, just about everyone out on the floor is smaller than Tatum, with 6'9 Paul Reed playing center for the 76ers. This is a go-to action for the Celtics, with Porzingis setting a flat screen while White pops up to the three-point line. These contrasting movements are a surefire way to cause a miscommunication, and we can see Philly get their wires crossed to clear the runway for Jalen Brown. With five shooters on the court and no real rim protector to slow them down, this was just flat out too easy for the Boston Celtics. But let's switch away from this game and look at a more competitive example, like their gritty win against Cleveland back in December. The Celtics only connected on 13 threes in this game, one of their lowest marks of the season, but they scored close to half of their points in the paint, a rare occasion for this high volume shooting team. We see the benefits of that volume right away, as Cleveland is so concerned with Brown popping out for three that Drew Holiday makes an easy backdoor cut. Here, Boston runs a stagger screen for Kristaps, and we see what makes the Celtics so unique, because most teams can't run a play like this for their 7-footer. But Kristaps is shooting 37% from downtown, and the Cavs can't risk him going scorched earth from behind the arc. So that leads to a less agile defender in George Niang, having to navigate multiple screens, which is easy money for the Celtics. Having Kristaps on the floor really is a backbreaker for opposing defenses, even though KP is a lethal shooter, he can act as a lob threat as well. And even with a hulking paint presence like Jared Allen, Cleveland is defenseless on the interior when Allen has to stick like glue to Porzingis. This actually led the Cavs attempting to play zone defense in their previous matchup, and yeah, you can't really get away with zone coverage against the Celtics, because they will just bombard you from three. So instead, Allen was forced to play much higher than he'd like to on these screening actions. As good of a defender as Allen is, you're putting a heavy strain on him trying to contain the point of attack this far up. And here's a good example of Boston changing their shot diet. Jalen Brown could have easily spotted up in the corner for a high quality three point attempt. But you know what's even more efficient than a corner three? A cutting dunk. To the basket, lays it down. Brown gets two. 
Here's another play where KP turns down a potential spot up three pointer to instead cut back door on a preoccupied Jared Allen. Passing up good shots for great shots could be the key to Boston finally getting over the hump. They held a solid lead for most of this game against Cleveland until a string of missed three point attempts opened the door for a comeback. These are tough shots that serve as daggers when they fall, but put the Celtics in compromising positions when they don't. Like right here, a point blank attempt at the rim is turned down for another three point shot from Brown. This isn't a bad look, but why not just take the easy two points? Thankfully, this long rebound turns into three points anyways, but it's back to back aggressive drives from Jason Tatum that officially puts the game out of reach. And again, pay attention to who was dragging Allen away from protecting the basket. As you guess, record ain't no. No challenge there. No. Let's take a look at one more game, this time the Christmas Day matchup against the Los Angeles Lakers. The Celtics shot a dreadful 31% from deep in this one, but managed to secure a win by locking down defensively and scoring in the paint when it mattered most. With so many sturdy individual defenders, the Celtics have the luxury of not having to collapse their entire defense to stifle a play. This is Jason Tatum defending Anthony Davis mostly one-on-one, -on -one, and this trust allows Holiday to stay within striking distance of LeBron to close out and force an awkward turnover late in the game. Boston has one of the best defenses in the NBA, seamlessly containing this pick and roll between D'Lo and James. And while Anthony Davis registered 40 points in this game, he certainly had to work for it. Davis, that White and Holiday, one of the great, oh, what a block! As White comes up with a Porzingis and White right there to double team. The Celtics are second in defensive rating this season, and it gives them something to fall back on when their three point shot isn't falling. The Celtics did not make a single three pointer in the fourth quarter, but managed to coast to victory by attacking the paint. Kristaps is great at popping on screens, but remember, he's a role threat as well. Here, KP occupies Davis, who is playing in drop coverage forcing him to stick just long enough for White to convert a layup. This brief moment of pause is all it takes for the Celtics to get an easy one. On the very next play, Boston uses their three-point threat as a diversion to get White backdoor for another lay-in. And a few plays later, the Celtics bank on their defense and quick hands from Persingis gets them a steal, a run out, and a slam dunk for Tatum. Oh, they couldn't get it to him. White throws it up for Tatum and he throws it down! The lead is now up to double digits, but Boston doesn't stray away from what is working. Here's Tatum and White playing off of each other again, this time forcing a switch so Tatum can take advantage of his size over Austin Reeves. Another touch in the paint, and another score. A more selective Tatum could take this team to new heights because of his size and ability to punish smaller defenders in the paint. Plays like this are so valuable in the playoffs when games are inevitably going to come down to scavenging ugly buckets. The game's all but wrapped up at this point, but Tatum chooses to attack a closeout rather than settling for a three-point attempt. This drive, dime, and dunk seals the deal for good. In many ways, the Celtics are their own worst enemy. They can roll the dice on their immense wealth of three-point shooters and see if this time it's enough to break the bank but I think NBA history has proven to be kind to the teams that can adjust on the fly. And there's a greater chance the Celtics find themselves ramming their own head into a wall if they don't diversify their shot selection come playoff time. Whether or not that happens, we'll just have to wait and see. But if they use their spacing for all it's worth, the Celtics might just be unbeatable. It's the shot come to him. I, you know, I think he's spoiled. He's so used to be able, being able to do whatever he wants like Jason Tatum does.